evaporate. <laughs> Good morning, guys. Whoa, sun. It is a beautiful day today. Uh, this video is going to be building a workbench. So you guys have seen um, probably in the background of some of my other videos recently that I kind of started working on this area a little bit. Um, I basically got a couple toolboxes. I got some wood. Um, I actually got um, the wood that I'm going to use to build the tool, the uh, blah, blah, blah. The wood that I'm going to use to build the workbench is uh, from a local sawmill um, and actually one that I started kind of working at. Uh, so the wood is eucalyptus and it is big chunks. Um, I basically got five boards that are seven and a half wide by two and a half um, size. So roughly a two by eight, a little bit bigger. And uh, that's what I'm going to be making the workbench out of. So thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. And let's get to work. All right, so this is the basic idea. I want to have my two toolboxes, and I want the bench to be high enough that it's going to, I can roll the two boxes under or roll them out. So if I need additional uh, workspace, I can roll the toolboxes out, and then I have the surface of the toolbox to work on. If not, They'll just be tucked away underneath the bench. So, like I said, these are pretty big. Um, let's see. Kind of hard to do this with uh, holding the phone in one hand. <laughs> so, yeah, that's about, yeah, just under seven and a half inches. And then uh, just under two and a half inches there. So um, they call this quarter eight, I guess, eight quarter, I don't know, something like that. I don't know all the um, woodworking terminology, but basically I have five of these. And what I'm looking for is to create a bench that is roughly, oh, if I don't drop my phone. So I'm looking for a bench that's roughly 30 to 32 inches is going to be the depth on it and then the overall length of this bench I basically want to go from this wall to the end of the cinder block which is about a hundred inches so that's going to be the size of the workbench so a hundred inches by 32 inches roughly so I'm going to be traveling today to my buddy Ryan's shop he is a local woodworker here on the Big Island makes some seriously amazing pieces that sell for a lot of money. Um, yeah, Modern Habitats Hawaii, you'll have to look him up on Instagram. But uh, I'm headed over to his shop. He's gonna help me get these in shape and get them put together. So the plan is um, getting all these squared up, glued up, and basically turning them into one giant piece of the workbench. And then to attach it to the wall, what I'm going to be doing is getting a piece of angle iron, probably like uh, two by two angle iron, I'm guessing would probably be sufficient. Uh, the angle iron is going to get mounted to the wall. The workbench will sit on top of that, and then there will be screws coming in from the bottom. And then I will have uh, a piece on the side here, which will probably end up being, I don't know, maybe the angle iron as well, we'll see. <clears throat> and then out here on this corner, there's going to end up being a post. So I'll probably get a two by two piece of square steel and then weld a foot on the bottom, a foot on the top, and then it'll get bolted into the ground and then also screwed into the corner. That should be sufficient to hold this in place. Um, if it ends up that this is sagging or something in the middle, I may put an additional post in the middle here. But I still want to be able to slide the toolbox is in and out, like I was saying. So I'm trying to avoid putting anything in the middle at all. The toolboxes will end up, most likely, this one will have to slide out of the end there, and then this one I can just swing out and pull out. Um, there's not quite enough room to swing this out, um, you know, with this toolbox in place if it can't be moved over. So that'll just be something that I'll have to deal with as I pull these out and use them for additional space. 
All right, all loaded up. Let's go for a drive. Oh, that's a different dog. <laughs> All right, I am at Ryan's shop. We got the wood here. Yeah. Yeah. My buddy Ryan. <laughs> so we are going to start milling these up, getting them squared up, and then uh, get them ready to be put together, glued together, to create the uh, tabletop. What, buddy? What? What? I know. Okay, big boy. I know. All right, so the first step is going to be to clean up the tops and bottoms of these, which we're going to use this machine. And basically it's a planer. It's going to feed in one side, come out the other side, and uh, we'll end up doing both sides, the top and bottom of each board. All right, so we got both sides uh, planed up, and this is uh, pretty awesome looking. I like all the color variations and the ripple in there. So once this is like put together and oiled up, this is gonna look really cool. So the next step is gonna be, uh, we're gonna take the track saw and we're gonna cut basically a straight edge because this is, you know, it was cut on the mill, so it's kind of straight, but it has, you know, a little bit of variation in it. So basically we're going to straight cut all of the ends and prepare it to glue together. All right, so the track saw is set up now and we're getting ready to make the first cuts. And basically the way that these work, it just gives you a straight edge. The saw is a plunge saw, kind of like a plunge router. Go down, do your cut, and then have a perfectly straight edge. All right, so now we're to this stage. Um, all the sides have been cut, evened up, and uh, it's pushed together. So this is roughly the size. Um, we're gonna end up cutting, I think, about an inch to an inch and a half off this. There's one big knot right there we'll end up getting rid of. Um, so the next part is gonna be putting these dominoes in. And then uh, we're gonna be close to glue up. All right, so now we're on the domino stage, and this thing is a very expensive piece of machinery so if I drop that on the floor I'll be working for Ryan for like two years <laughs> nah, uh, but basically what it does uh, the way a domino cutter works is it's a plunge tool and you can see the hole that's in here and it basically cuts a hole the exact size of the domino the dominoes come in you know all different sizes so you got to set the machine for the domino you're using put that in it gets pounded in with glue the other side has the matching one you basically went in, uh, I went in and put lines on all of this when it was on the ground, so everything lines up. So that's what I'm gonna be doing now, is just cutting in all these dominoes and then uh, one step closer to glue up. All right, so all of the dominoes are cut and we are getting ready for the glue up. I got all the dominoes here. We got our clamps set up. Um, basically what's gonna happen is glue, dominoes, glue, domino. Put these together, do that section together. Then we'll have two big sections we'll put together and then put the last end on. Something like that. Anyway, it'll be on the time lapse. All right, so the table is fully glued up. Now it's just uh, sit and wait time. All right, so it's the next day. We are back um, basically trimming up the edges so that I can get my full 100 inches that I'm looking for and to get a nice clean edge on both sides. And then we're gonna end up cutting about, uh, I think about an inch and a half off this end so that we can eliminate that big knot and to give me my 32 inches deep that I'm looking for. Woo! 
Alright, so this is the uh, last step. Being it through a big drum sander to uh, flatten out the top. So we are back at my shop and we got the workbench moved in. It looks pretty awesome all together. Of course, it's just sitting on top of the um, toolboxes for right now. Uh, I did end up getting a kind of a backsplash piece here. So this was the end that we actually cut off um, so that this was 32 inches. So right now this thing is exactly 100 inches by 32 inches deep. So, um, next steps, I'm going to need to get some steel. Uh, I'm going to get probably a two inch piece of angle iron that's going to get mounted along this block wall. And then the bench is going to sit on top of that. I'm going to get some two inch square tube and basically weld a foot on the bottom and the top. And that's going to be the support at this corner. And then along this wall, there will be a piece of wood mounted for the uh, bench to sit on on that wall. Or I may just get like a 90 degree bracket or something in there um, and basically just tie into the the beams, you know, that are in this wall and then for that to sit on. Or I'll just get a, I guess, an extra piece of the angle iron and then just make the bracket. So that'll be the next steps. Um, of course, this is going to need a lot more sanding um, it was run through the drum sander, but that's basically just to level everything out. So, uh, and that drum sander is uh, like a 60 grit, so this is still very rough. So I am going to uh, work my way. I got to get some discs, some sanding discs for my little orbital, orbital sander. And then uh, I'm going to take this up to probably a 400 grit finish. And then that'll be good. Um, and then put some oil on it and uh, all of these colors are just going to start to pop. So pretty excited about it. Um, there's a couple spots here you can see where the drum kind of hit. So I'll have to take that stuff down. A couple nice knots in here. Like right here is a pretty cool looking one. Um, yeah. So it's looking good. I will continue. Um, might be a week or so before I even get to the next part of this video, but... Of course, it's only going to be a few seconds for you guys. <laughs> okay, well, I guess it wasn't a week. It's actually been many, many months <laughs> since I last worked on my workbench. And in that time, the wood shifted a lot. So it's very ripply, wavy. There's even some spots that lifted and lowered. And so um, that's beyond sanding. So what I'm going to be doing now is taking this to the other side of the island, um, going with my buddy Ryan to help him on an install. Then we're going to go to the mill, throw this on the CNC, and we're basically going to flatten the entire slab, basically like a big flattening router bit, and we'll just take down the whole thing. So yeah, like I said, it's been many months since I did this, and a lot's changed in the shop since then. But I need to get this workbench done, so see you on the other side of the island. All right, so back in the shop, as you saw in that time lapse, worked right until it was getting dark. <laughs> And there's no light. There's no lights in the shop there where that uh, that CNC machine is. Oh, what is that? It looks like a footprint. <laughs> yeah. So um, this thing is back in the shop. Like I said, um, it's funny to think about this video. I think the very first video um, at the beginning of this video that I recorded was um, December seventeenth last year. So it was almost a year ago exactly um, since I first started working on this stupid workbench. Um, but I'm going to get it finished now. Um, so as the thing sat over time, I think I might have explained earlier in the video, I don't remember or not, but it got some 
you know, the wood moved. Um, so hopefully it's been dried enough now. It's been sitting for another year, um, pretty much since it's been glued up almost that time. Um, yeah, so I think it should be fairly dry now. Um, hopefully it doesn't move much more. But what I have left to do now is I need to get some uh, angle steel. Um, and I'm going to be mounting some steel on the back wall there. And then this is going to sit on top of that. It will get screwed in from the bottom. And then I'm going to be fabricating a leg that's going to go in this corner. And then um, over here on this wall, I'll do like a 2 by 4 or something for it to sit on on that wall. Um, so that's going to be the next steps. And I also have to do a lot of sanding. Because even though this is flattened out now, um, there's still, like right here, there's some really rough spots, if you can see that. So all of that's got to be taken down with sander, and that's going to take me a little while. And I'm not looking for a super flatness on this. I mean, it is a workbench, but I want it to be smooth at the very least. And then there's a couple spots here, like there was a knot here, so I'm going to have to fill that with epoxy. Maybe this little piece. Um, but I think that's about it. Uh, might be a little bit there and maybe a little bit here, but we'll see how it comes out once I start sanding. So I'll probably just fill those spots with epoxy. So um, I have to run to town, which will probably be tomorrow because it's Sunday today and I know uh, Hilo Steel is not open. Um, and then I'll get the piece of steel. And then also in the meantime, I'm going to work on sanding this, which I'm not going to bother videotaping because videotaping, <laughs> recording. Um, yeah, so that's where we're at. And I also uploaded a short, so maybe you might have seen that, my first short. I guess I'm going to start doing shorts now. All right. All right, so finally made it to Hilo Steel. Um, and I got the, this is two-inch uh, angle iron. Um, so that's basically going to get mounted to the wall, to the back wall. And then the bench will sit on top of that, so it'll get screwed in. And then I have a two inch by two inch square tube that is going to be my leg. So that's going to end up being the bottom plate. And then underneath the vise here is a large, larger plate. That's going to be the top plate of the leg. So it'll be under the bench, but I'm going to be drilling holes in there to mount my vise. So the vise will end up being on the corner of the bench and it'll actually be bolted to the leg that's going to be bolted to the ground so that it's really solid. So, um, yeah, I got the welder ready and uh, I'm going to get this stuff cut to size and welded up. And uh, then I'll have to throw some paint on it and then we can start working on getting this thing actually mounted. I started doing a little bit of sanding, but I still got to do a lot more. So you can see this is kind of smoothed out a little. Um, I've just been super busy <sighs> for not having a job, man. <laughs> I didn't really slow down at all. Anyway, let me get to this. All right, so I have these plates prepped and I have my piece cut for the leg. Um, so this is gonna be the piece that actually is gonna go underneath the workbench and this is kind of upside down. So it'll be like that. Um, the leg is actually gonna get welded in this corner here. And then these two larger holes are for the bolt holes that go through to the vise. So those will end up going all the way through. And then the bottom here, this is going to be the plate that's going to get mounted to the concrete down there. And you see I countersunk the holes because the uh, concrete screws that I'm going to use, they have a countersink on there. So basically the, the leg is going to sit, you know, in the middle and then it'll have a screw on all four corners. And then same here, there'll be screws going up into the workbench, which will be here. And then these will be the bolts going through. So I'm getting set up, got my generator running. Um, and I'm going to weld these together. It's been a while since I welded, so we'll see how it goes. <laughs>
over for uh, Ryan to buzz it with the MIG real quick, or the TIG, sorry. Yeah. And it's super rainy. All right. So, I have my stand built there. Um, it's got a coat of paint on it, so I mean, this isn't in place yet. It's just standing there. Got my laser out, getting my markings on the wall. Um, so I'm getting ready to take the piece of angle iron and get it mounted up here. <clears throat> and I have to, I still need to drill holes in the angle iron. I got it over there against the wall uh, for mounting to the wall. And then also holes to put screws up into the um, workbench once I get it in place. And then I'm going to do a two by four here, which I got to cut and I'll mount to the wall there. And I think why this is all open, I might actually hit this with paint and get this wall actually painted instead of the halfway job that it is now. <laughs> so let me get a little further and then uh, I'll show my progress. All right, so you just saw me drill that uh, angle iron out, uh, angle bar, angle channel, right angle steel, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> so I actually did put countersinks in there, if you can see, because the tap cons that I got actually have a countersunk top. And what I did was I held it in place with the laser and I used my Sharpie and I marked two holes. So one hole here, one hole over there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the first two screwed in. Um, not completely tight, but I'll probably do one and then I'll put a level on it just to make sure that it's as level as I can get it and then I'll do the other one. And then I'll go in and I'll add in the other four screws or how many ever I did. So yeah, let me get uh, onto that. All right, so this piece is fully mounted now, screwed in. As you can see, I hit it with some primer. Uh, that's just so that you know the metal doesn't rust over time um, or to help slow down the rusting, I guess. I added in my two by four support there. I put some paint on this. This will probably get painted again because it's not that good. You can see through it, but it's at least the first coat. Uh, I was going to do a sweet painting time lapse because I know how you guys love those, but <laughs> I passed. So uh, the point I'm at now is going to be sanding the actual workbench. Now, I did sand down here quite a bit, not quite a bit, a little bit. Um, so it's smoothed out some. Uh, I'm not going to sand this ent entire thing today. I just want to get all of the rough down and get it to a point where it's fairly smooth because I also still want to fill these with epoxy, which I'm probably not even going to show that, you know, because I just want to get this thing done. So funny thing is today is December 17th, Saturday, right? So the very first video that I recorded that's at the beginning of this video was December 17th of last year. <laughs> so that means it's taken me a year to do this stupid work match. But that's why there's such a variance from the beginning of the video to the end of the video about how much I've gotten done in the shop. And we have thunderstorms going on, so that's pretty cool. Except the dogs are freaking out. You can see them all curled up over there, always right under my feet. So I'm going to get sanding and uh, get like at least a good, I'd like to get the whole thing to, you know, 60 or 120. If I can get it to 120, that'd be awesome because that's actually finished enough. Um, and then maybe put a little bit of oil on it, some teak oil. But I may have to do the epoxy fill spots first before I do that. So, um, yeah, let me get sanding and then uh, I want to get this mounted to the wall. All right. So, I got this entire thing sanded to 60 grit. So, you get to see a lot of the color starting to pop. Oh man, my wheat soda left a ring. <laughs> All right, so next step is going to be 120. 
and uh, get that done and then that should be it so I think tonight I'll um because we're going to like some Christmas party thing today um so I think I will go ahead and pour the epoxy tonight and then tomorrow I will work on getting this sanded the rest of the way and then getting it mounted to the wall why are you over there skull Hati's so scared he doesn't like thunder. Yeah. All right, back to sanding. All right, so now the whole thing is sanded to 120. And what I'm getting ready to do now is I'm gonna make up, mix up some of the uh, G-Flex epoxy. I have some black dye. This is essentially the same stuff that I use to glue uh, my knife handles on when I'm doing, when I'm making knives but that's all that I have for epoxy. So I'm gonna mix up a couple small cups and then fill like the spots in here that need to be filled. Oh boys. All right, so I got some epoxy dumped on here. Basically where there were some rotten spots um, that I sanded out so there's kind of a little valley there a couple of spots where there were knots uh, and then some of the seams where the, the wood was glued together so I just kind of hit that this is not really to seal the table or anything like that it's just to kind of fill in the cracks um, to give me you know I, I just want it to be smooth surface pretty much <clears throat> so this is gonna sit till tomorrow and then uh, I'll be back to 60 grit to take this all down and then I'll do another 120 grit pass. And then I think it'll be ready to mount. So now I'm getting started on the good part. Came out early this morning, sanded it again, all the epoxy, did the whole thing with 120 again and then I actually hit it with a 322, 320 as well. <laughs> So now I'm putting a mixture of tongue oil and boiled linseed oil. Just applying it with a rag. Try to make sure that it's good and saturated, but you don't want to leave puddles. So once you get the initial wipe down done, you come through and you clean up any puddles that might have formed. This is the same thing that I used on the Ohia post, as well as my anvil stand. And this is something that can be reapplied so it's not actually like a lacquer. It does have a little bit in there from the tongue oil, so it'll have kind of a sheen on it. But then, like I said, it could always be added again. All right, let me get this finished up, then we can start working on getting it mounted to the wall. Okay, so uh, I flipped over the top, or I flipped over the workbench, this is the bottom. <laughs> and what I'm doing now is I'm placing, uh, this is where the, the leg is going to be. So when I built this support, this leg support, I put a bigger plate on the top and then um, my vise will be mounted on this corner. So that's what these larger holes are for. So I'm gonna drill those holes in before I get this in place, because it's gonna be more difficult to try and do it from underneath. So I'll drill those holes in right now, and then I'll get this flipped back over, and then we can 
get it into position and uh, start getting it secured. And then I'm also going to, on this back edge, I'm gonna do some sill gasket, which is like that foam usually that you put between uh, like concrete and wood if you're putting in a wall. Like if anybody remembers back when I was building this, like all of these have sill gasket between the concrete and the wood. So I'm gonna put some sill gasket uh, on this back part where it will sit on the angle iron over there. And I probably will actually put a piece in here as well. And then I'll probably put a piece here between here and the concrete as well. So let me get these holes drilled and uh, then we can start getting this thing into place. Man, this is beautiful. What a long time coming, <laughs> literally. So I have the leg bolted up with just the vice bolts right now. Um, I haven't drilled anything into the floor yet because I'll, of course, I want to, you know, plumb up that leg both ways, make sure that it's plumb. Um, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to crawl underneath and I'm going to shoot a bunch of screws up through the angle bracket back there into the table to secure it to the wall. And then there's also some additional screws uh, on the corner of this plate. So I'll shoot those in so that when I, you know, if I replace the vise or I need to pull these bolts out for whatever reason, the, the leg doesn't shift. And then once that's done, I'll drill some holes into the concrete there and I will anchor it to the floor and it'll be done. Man, this is so nice looking though. Yeah, look at that, popping. So that boiled linseed and tongue oil mixture, um, it's gonna soak into the table over the next, I don't know, week or so. And then I'll do another, I'll do another rub down of it. So uh, what my buddy Ryan told me is if you do about three to four coats of it, then it'll be pretty much sealed up. Um, Cause the tongue oil does have like some kind of a lacquer sort of finish to it so yeah it'll i'll just continue doing that over time and then since i had it out i actually did another coat on the uh, ohia post here so you see it's all shiny again so it'll be the same thing i've done i think this is the third coat that i've put on the ohia post so the same thing will eventually happen to the workbench but yeah, this is nice. Let me uh, get this thing screwed in and uh, attached to the wall permanently. And there it is. Everything's fully installed. Got the concrete anchors put in the bottom here. Everything is screwed in under here. Got the vise bolted on. I will come back and cut these off. I just uh, can't remember remember who borrowed my grinder <laughs> with the cutoff wheel so I gotta find that and then I guess the only last thing is I do have a piece that will go across the back which is right there in the corner that piece standing up um, so that was actually when we were trimming this down we cut a strip off the back and then I basically used that for like a backsplash I guess um, so I will sand that thing down and put tongue, you know, put the oil on it and everything just like this. And then I will attach it to the, I'll probably just put a couple screws straight down into the bench. So it's actually part of the bench. And then that'll close up the gap on this wall because, you know, I'm not a brick mason. So when I built this wall, like it's not perfectly straight. So it's almost touching in the middle here. There's a little gap there, and then there's a little gap there. So, but you know, but I gotta say, it's pretty amazing seeing this done. This was literally a year in the making. <laughs>
Okay. Well, that didn't work exactly how I was picturing it in my head. But anyway, the whole purpose of doing this bench this way was so that I could slide the toolboxes in and out. Um, I think I initially, when I was planning it and putting that leg there, I was going to bring the toolbox in from the end, so I'll have to try that move the trash can. Um, but man, this is done. This is so cool. Um, tired. <laughs> But this is done. This has been, like I said, a year in the making. Um, so today's Sunday, December 18th, and then the first video, like I mentioned before, was December 17th of 2021. So, yeah, this video is done finally. I know this is probably a longer one. Um, but yeah, I just want to say thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Um, this is going to be my last video of the year, I'm sure, because by the time this comes out, it's going to be... Friday will be the, I think that's the 23rd. Um, so yeah, I won't have another video by before New Year's. Um, but 2023 is going to be a great year. There's a lot of projects coming up. I mentioned before in one of my previous videos, we've already started on the Ohana. Um, I haven't done a video yet on that because I'm kind of waiting until I get a couple videos ready to go. Um, Going to be starting on the chicken coop 2.0 going to be building an aviary for parrots um yeah so there will be a lot so please come back guys and if you're new please go back and watch some of the old videos and subscribe and then come back and watch some more all right guys merry christmas to everyone i hope everyone has a happy new year and uh <laughs> aloha